Hello everyone and welcome. This video is going to be a little different. This is not about a engine. This is about a motor. This is a Hunter Model 90 434 oscillating four blade three speed pedestal fan. This fan is sort of made to look like their retro mode is what they're going for here from their early manufacture days, I guess. This fan has a date of August 2011 on it. The model number uh, seems to have two others in this owner's manual, being the 90405 and the 90435. In the late 1800s, John Hunter and son James innovated a new way of keeping cool with the ceiling fan. So they transformed their shotgun factory into the first ceiling fan manufacturer in the USA in 1866. Hunter acquired the Turek Water Meter Company in 1866, and uh, that helped them develop a belt drive system that was ran by water. <laughs> yes, water. The first ceiling fans were innovatively created by Hunter and were powered by steam created uh, energy to power the ceiling fan blades and in the 1890s the electric ceiling fans came around but they were primarily in the commercial stores and stuff like that because mainly you wanted to save your electricity back in those days for the lights in your house and other more important things I guess. And the oil embargo of 73 made people think of other ways to stay cool and cut energy costs. So one of the most efficient ways to do that was to get a ceiling fan. And so a lot of them started selling in the 70s. In fact, uh, really the ceiling fan was one of the first electric items in the house, along with the light bulb and radio, I guess. And... Uh, they also came up with reversing the blades to bring warm air down from the ceiling into the room. And Hunter remains the largest ceiling fan manufacturer today. And the Hunter original fan was the most popular, I guess, developed in the early 1900s. It had a cast iron body and a powerful motor and a real wood teak blade set up and an oil bath lubrication system that made it a stable, wobble-free, and very quiet fan. And these fans were made so well, in fact, they had a lifetime warranty on them. I put this Hunter fan up about three years ago in my office, and uh, before that I had one in here that had probably been up since the mid-90s. And a friend of mine gave me this fan, and he was going to toss it, but I thought, well, I might give it a try, the old college try, and try and save it. This particular model was discontinued on the web, but uh, the current four-blade model that took the place of this one looks a lot like it. These are not plastic crap stand fans that will break and stop oscillating after a while or not last any time at all. Like I say, this, this is from 2011, so it's just now probably had a problem, and I imagine it's had its full share of use. And uh, the replacement's around 120 bucks for these things, so, you know, <laughs> it's uh, worth maybe trying to save it. I'm wondering if this switch is in a closed position. I know it's broken. It needs to be replaced. So I'm going to plug it up and see if maybe it's in a closed position. Doesn't seem to be. So we'll have to get it out of there and see what's going on. Start by taking this Phillips head screw off here. This seems to have like a metal loop that holds this cage together or holds the front part of the cage together. Get that off of there. 
then your front grill will come off. Next we'll take our fan blade off and that's a Phillips head screw. Notice how that shaft has a slot on it for that screw to set on there. And how nasty this thing is. <laughs> okay, next we're going to have four Phillips head screws that hold the back part of the cage on. Take those out. And then that'll come off. Next, we're going to have four screws on the front of our motor cover here. And that shell will come off of there. That'll expose your motor. And you can see how your switch mounts there. It has a small nut around the top there. Just loosen that up and take it off. And that switch is broken. That's the reason it's turning around and around and around and around. <laughs> Toasted. We're going to take our oscillator control off now and that's a Phillips head screw down in there and that'll come off. The T10 Torx will get this hex bolt out on the back and that will release your cover slide it off and there's our <laughs> EOL <laughs> switch there or part of it <laughs> I believe this switch is falling completely apart and there's the top of it we seem to be missing the contact so somewhere down in there probably And there's our wires that go to our control switch, which have fallen out of there, so I'll have no idea what's <laughs> high and low. That's our actual conductor. Spray some air and clean this thing out a little bit. See how this works with the oscillator there. The back part of the motor has a drive off of the back. And that gear system makes it go back and forth. This degraded switch here is branded KTE. The number on the case back is E87458, the model number is 238. This is what you find on the KTE Electrical Limited's website. It's rated 3 amps at 250 volts and 6 amps at 125 volts AC, which applies in our case here. 
and they want you to contact a sales rep so this may be their distribution site for the ones that want to buy a quantity of these but i found this switch on ebay or something similar to it it's actually overrated for this fan so we don't have no worries for it this is the same form factor it looks like and it's rated at 13 amps 120 volts ac in our case the original was 6 amps at 125 volts ac so we're good at that i think so we have our ratings covered. This switch has controls that should be more than enough to hold the load of this fan. And we have our new control switch ordered in. Finally come in. So let's get that out and compare them here. Should be pretty close to the same thing. This switch here is actually rated a little bit better you can see how the other one fell apart there that's pretty much how one of the what one of these switches are <laughs> all you gotta do is pick that thing up and it falls apart You'll see this has a contacts on the back of it. That's what closes these wires here to that transformer right there or that coil winding to decide how quick our motor runs. You will have a red, orange, and gray wire there. Those are your control wires. And then this black wire here is your main power coming in. We're going to clean up these fan blades. When you're cleaning these fan blades up, be careful not to bend them because they're not actually really thick, so you want to be kind of careful and don't get them out of shape there. The reason we're cleaning these up I will show you. Nice and clean there. I have a digital tachometer. We're going to try that out. Actually comes with a pretty cool case. The reason this thing's actually comes with the tester and the instructions and this is your reflective strip. The reason we cleaned our blades up is we're going to cut a square here and put them on our blades because the way this works is you aim that laser at this reflective tape and that's going to give us RPM measurement. I'm going to put my blade back on and we're going to get some speeds out of this thing. 54 degree day <laughs> in the shop. 52% humidity and I'm working on a fan. <laughs> Okay, my purpose here is going to be to act as the switch and short out my wires from the coil winding to these other wires to get my RPM speed. My red wire is around 2600 RPM. My orange wire is going to be around 2130 RPM. My gray wire around 1850 RPM. So this is the way I'm going to wire my switch. My red's going to go to number three, orange to number two, gray to number one. This is what it looks like. This switch has those push-in tabs, so you just push your wire in those. You may have to 
recut your wire depending on your situation. If they break on you when you pull them out of the old switch or whatnot. If they just slide in there and those tabs grab them. And that's my switch wired up. This had a like a protective shield in between the switch and the case. So I'm going to put that back. When you reinstall your switch, make sure that your configuration goes in that slot right there to hold it in so your switch don't turn around and around. Put our nut back on, use our needle nose pliers and tighten that back up. We'll put our switch knob back on there. And that's our switch installed. Now I'm gonna test it out. Make sure I got all my speeds from low to high. Seems to be working good. Gotta love it. Okay, now I'm gonna tie my wires back up with some zip ties. Cut those off so everything will be nice and neat under there. Once I've got that done, I'm gonna be ready to go back on with my cover. This bike has a T10 Torx screw that goes in it. Make sure that you get your cover on there in a position where you can get your oscillator control knob reinstalled on there. And to put that back on there, we're gonna be using a Phillips head screwdriver. It's our oscillator control knob. Now we're going to put our outer cover on. Make sure you got that notch going there. That's going to slide in around your motor there, motor housing. Put your four Phillips head screws in that to hold it in. I've got my covers cleaned up. And you'll notice, put your handle at the top and then reinstall your four Phillips head screws to hold your back cover cage on. Then I'm going to reinstall my fan with a Phillips head screwdriver. Make sure you get that, that notch on that shaft there. And then tighten that down real nice and good. Now we're ready to go on with our outer cage. And there's a couple of clips at the bottom and the top of this outer cage. You wanna clip those on there and clip them into place. And then your outer ring's gonna install back on. At the bottom, there's gonna be a small Phillips head screw that goes through there. And we're completely reassembled. As a matter of fact, I was able to even put my old switch, old uh, knob back on there. Hit right on that shaft. So that worked out beautifully. I have all three of my speeds. Worked out very nicely. Let's see if our oscillator works. Yep, works fine.
Well, that's great. We saved a hunter fans with a new switch. Cost us about six, six, seven dollars to fix this fan. If you had to replace it, that's a hundred and twenty bucks. And that's replacing the three-way switch on a hunter pedestal fan. I hope this helps you out.